So we got the engine all broken down. We're going to look over our parts and pieces and uh, see what we think and um, what we're going to do moving forward. So we'll start with um, the best items and work our way to the worst and the most concerning. So taking a look at all the bearings here, usually I just chuck these in the garbage, but usually at 150, 180,000 miles or so, like this engine has, you'll be worn down to the copper on almost all the bearings. Most of the main bearings are completely in still tremendous shape, so that's absolutely awesome. And then our rod bearings, all of those are in pretty good shape. Um, the top part of the connecting rod, uh, the part that's the rod side, not the cap side, they've all run down to the copper in some way, but overall, after all those miles, these are in tremendously good shape. So that takes us to our crankshaft. And to take a closer look at that, the journals are absolutely stellar. There's no big nasty grooves in it. So um, what we're gonna go ahead and do is, it's the standard size, so we'll just take the crank in, spend a few bucks to have it polished, and then we'll use uh, one under bearings. So um, that should be good. I'm taking a look at the cam. Um, depending on how the rest of this is, we may or may not um, in this case, reuse a cam, but this particular camshaft is what I would deem worn out. Now these roller cams do get a little bit of wear and you can see where the lifter um, roller runs along and then when it starts to ramp up on the lobe and the spring pressure increases, there's actually a dip on all the lobes right here. So. Um, didn't wipe a lobe, but I wouldn't say this cam would have lasted 50,000 more miles. Eventually, um, it'd start getting past the hardened surface here, and it would wear out. So um, the cam is pretty well worn. You could use it, but if you're not doing a slap build, I wouldn't. So um, that brings us to if we're going to do a slap build on it or not, and um, moving on to the cylinders. So most of these look absolutely tremendous. There's no lip on the end of the cylinders. They'd hone up real nice and re-ring really well. And all of them are like this. You can even see the cross hatching still on the cylinder from um, when it was worked over way from the factory. So that one's got a little bit of a wear spot there. But um, this brings us to the most interesting part of this engine. And I've never seen a wear pattern like this. As you can see here, we have wear on um, all four corners. And normally you only wear on, um, you know, the bottom of the skirts uh, where the skirt's the longest. So right in this area, right in the top, you could see some wear generally right here pretty bad, but this is off to the side and it's evenly spaced. So as I mentioned before, I did get this engine for free and it was again driven for 150 or so thousand miles. It came out, it was in a Crown Victoria station wagon and then it was demo derbied. So you can imagine the radiator was smashed in, it ran out of coolant. It eventually overheated and um, probably quit running. So we can see something very interesting here. Now if we can get our camera to focus, there's a very interesting lip, there we go, along the uh, cylinder bore. And you can see it doesn't follow a line. And you can't feel it with your finger, but it's real interesting. So if our sleeve is cracked, um, this engine's pretty much junk. We'd have to sleeve it and that's going to cost us a hundred bucks or so and we do something else. But um, there's also another one of these down there. So that brings us to our piston. So that's a shame because the engine was obviously taken care of so well um, with the crank and all that. But coming to our piston, again, 
it's really interesting wear. Usually you have all your wear right along here on the piston and all of the other pistons appear tremendous. But this piston in particular, cylinder number one, has wear on the four corners. It's very interesting. So I'm assuming it's from overheating. This piston expanded. Um, there's material there where it would expand from here and make contact and eventually probably lock the engine up for a time. So anyway, I guess the next course of action would be to uh, put a hone to this cylinder and see if those ridges will come out. If they'll come out, they're not cracks in the uh, cylinder wall, but if they don't, then um, we'll have to sleeve this engine if we want to use it. So anyway, um, Moreover, kind of something interesting that you never ever see, you get the opportunity to see there with this engine, but um, that's pretty much how to tear down the small block Ford. So um, from this point, uh, going through the rebuild process, I have a video series on how to rebuild the budget um, small block Ford. It's a step-by-step -step walkthrough. Uh, it's a pretty good video series. So if you want to watch that and see how to rebuild your engine, you can go ahead and uh, go that route. But anyway, that does it for this video. And uh, um, I hope it helped you tear down your small block forward.